the program. But uh, concluding this panel, we are very honored to have a guest from Norway, our neighboring country, uh, to present the difference in the attitude and the views of the Belt and Road and China in both in Norway and Sweden. Mr. Tura Vespi, former member of the Norwegian Parliament and honorary mayor of Prague. Well.
said that we haven't had a foreign policy since World War II. We are just doing like the Americans are telling us to. And that is also very much the case with the Secretary General in NATO, who is from Norway. So uh, that is probably also blocking the good news and the understanding of, of Chinese culture and what's going on in China and why they are so successful. Another difference is that you had Alfred Nobel, who started the, the Nobel Prizes, and he gave Norway the opportunity to give the Peace Prize. But we haven't been very successful, with, we have been quite successful with that, with uh, some exceptions, especially one given to a dissident in China, where she in 2010. It went immediately into a diplomatic freeze, and we had that freeze for seven years. We were completely played checkmate by China. I was meeting very often with the foreign minister, the secretary of state in Norway, at, uh, in that period of time. And he was he was just uh, blocked. Our actions couldn't do nothing. So we were let into the war by the end of 2017, uh, and we had to sign, and we agreed to sign, that we will ever, never again interfere in internal Chinese matters, which I think is very good. And China is doing the same to other countries. I think that is a very good principle. Uh, last week, we had the uh, Constitution Day in Norway. It is a very big day for us. Uh, it's actually almost world famous, the way that we celebrate it. And we had a huge delegation from China. Number three, Mr. Li San Shu, the leader of the party's Congress, uh, was in Norway and watched it. And they made some good uh, deals. They opened more up. And uh, the press was, of course, talking about the negative things, while the government and the delegation were talking about the positive things. We are differencing us from Sweden because we are have more land up in the north, uh, to the Sea of Barents and the Arctic. That is a very interesting area for the Chinese, because uh, as the ice now melts, there is, uh, there has become a new silk road, the Arctic silk road. So there has been container ships going from China and the Northwest Passage and to St. Petersburg. It's gonna stop in the north of Norway at the city of Sirkenes. And they're gonna build a railway from Sirkenes to Haparanda. And then it's gonna be a hub in Finland and then a tunnel to Europe from Finland. It is very promising. Uh, I'm sorry to say, Swiss, but we have more fish than you have. <laughs> Uh, we don't have enough, so we grow them, and that is of very, very high interest for the Chinese and for us. We sell every fish fresh, uh, and uh, last week a direct line from Beijing to Oslo was opened, and on the first return there were 13 tons of salmon. And of course we have the, the, the oil and gas industry. So that was, um, in a way, uh, history. Um, so what is happening exactly today? How do we look upon uh, the Belton Road Initiative? As I said, the man in the street uh, are having very old-fashioned 
thinking and knowledge about China. Uh, and yesterday, the, the Confederation of Enterprises and Small and Medium Sized Businesses, they released a report for challenges and possibilities for Norwegian business in China. It was a very positive report. I think it was very balanced because uh, I think uh, to make the Norwegians understand the impact of Ethnoroad Initiative uh, and the basis, basics in it, we should <coughs> learn the people step by step and the, uh, and the businesses also step by step. Um, but they have some, uh, I will mention a few few uh, points that was uh, mentioned that I find very interesting. It's very much these days in the talking, the IPR, the, uh, the, uh, the rights about patents and things. Um, and let me tell you a story about a Norwegian company who uh, when the king and queen who had a visit in China uh, last year, uh, they were in the delegation and they made a deal with a big company in China about remote health care. You can for three diseases, you can do it remotely and you can talk by WeChat. Uh, uh, we do a WeChat conference with the patient without going to the patient. Very promising. And very much of interest in China. Uh, so they thought, what about the source code? What do we do with the source code? It can be copied. But this quite small company, they realized very fast that um, you know, uh, to protect it, then we, it, will, it will require so much resources, so we will break our neck by the cost of the protection. And on the other hand, China is so big, so let them take it. China is big enough for a lot of us. And I think also now they're talking about the Chinese who are stealing patents from, from uh, mostly America. Uh, and I noticed the, uh, the answer to, to the owner of Huawei, Mr. Ren, he said that we are so happy for all the good things that come from America. But I can tell you that the copying will turn around because the innovation in China now is so massive. Uh, they are overdoing the rest of the world uh, now, and they will do that in a higher and higher extent. So I guess the one who is going to steal in the future, that is us. And I think also these rights will, will, um, will go into an, another area. It's about sharing and it's about developing. Um, one other interesting uh, point from that report is that we are now more looking on China as a market. Up till now, we are mostly looked about China as the producer of things that we import. Now we see China as a market, and that is exactly in the atmosphere of the Belt and Road Initiative, it is about sharing. It is about, it's a win-win in both ways. And as the middle class in China raises from, uh, I heard 200 millions three years ago, 2020, 300 millions, 2025, 600 millions middle class. They can buy a lot from all over the world, including Norway, including Sweden, Europe. Uh, so that is that possibility. So it's interesting to see that companies even in Norway are looking at China as a market. And there has also been um, a change in the rhetorics from 
the government side. Uh, just a couple of years ago, they said that when talking to China, it was about when the opening uh, of the uh, or the release of the diplomatic freeze, we have in the in discussion with China, we must promote Norwegian values. That has now changed. Uh, and that tells me that they are following the situation quite close and have a good relation to China because now the government are saying we have to protect our own values. So this is uh, uh, a very big change in how we look for China. I think that is uh, positive. What I am afraid of is that the polarization between America and China and, you know, the world is getting bigger and bigger. And I must say that the American president is doing his best to achieve that uh, by the uh, latest announcement about uh, blacklisting products from Android, Google and Face. It is just uh, terrible. Uh, it's not the way that we like, the world like, uh, but this is, in a way, maybe one of the last things uh, in that uh, trade war they're going to be, because now he, he is hitting me and you on the mobile phone. So I think there's going to be an interesting development from that. What I think is important for um, Norwegians to understand is that if you're looking on this polarization of the Americans or the Chinese culture, America is steadily saying that we are number one and we want to be number one. And they say that, you know, China is challenging that position. China is not challenging the way that I see it. China don't care about the ranking. They can be number 10 if they're happy. They can be number 40 if they're happy. China wants to be happy. China wants to do good. They don't care about the ranking. So it, I think it is a way of, of uh, making an enemy. They like to put it black and white. That is, that is not the Chinese type. It's absolutely more pragmatic. And when the Americans and Norwegians are putting the individual first, the Chinese are putting the country first. So I think it's important that, you know, to look upon China, you have to look upon it from the inside, not from the outside. And you know, when Steve Bannon, when he, he is a man that are looking, are focusing on the differences, managed to put uh, Donald Trump in the White House, it must be a crash. China are looking for common ground. And that is not what the president do. He is looking for the differences. So uh, it is tempting to say that you probably know the expression, ask not what the country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. So what I think America needs is another Kennedy. Then they can talk to the Chinese. So, um, and then we can have a shared future for mankind. Thank you.